Wubba lubba dub dub motherfuckers. What's going on everyone in this eye? Everyone's here jack of all trades with a foul mouth coming to Urban. And welcome back to another awesome fucking video. I greatly appreciate you guys sticking around watching this shit. It's the reason why I fucking do it for you guys. Anyway, we have here uh, a figure that I got from the Disney Infinity, which is the incredible Jock Skellington, the Pumpkin King. And you probably wonder why we have Jack here. Well, I got a book review for you guys, which we are going to be going into his world. The world of the Nightmare Before Christmas. And it's actually uh, a book that's been pretty popular here lately, and I wanted to read it because I'm a big fan of the Nightmare Before Christmas. So anyway, here we go. I have the book. It is called Long Live the Pumpkin Queen, which is by New York Times best-selling author Shay Earnshaw, which is about Sally, which would be Jack's lover. The nightmare didn't end after Christmas. Ooh. Jack and Sally are truly meant to be, or are they? Sally's skeleton is the official newly minted pumpkin queen after a whirlwind courtship with her true love, Jack. Sally adores Jack with every inch of her fabric seams. If only she could say the same for her new role as queen of Halloween Town. Cast into the spotlight and tasked with all sorts of queenly duties, Sally can't help wondering if she's traded her captivity under Dr. Finkelstein for a different Albert gilded cage. But when Sally and Zero accidentally uncover a long hidden doorway to an ancient realm called Dreamtown, <sniffs> ah, fuck. Okay. she unknowingly sets in motion a chain of sinister events that will put her future as Pumpkin Queen and the future of Halloween Town itself in jeopardy. Can Sally discover what it means to be true to herself and save the town she's learned to call home? Or will her future turn into her worst, well, nightmare? This is absolutely a fucking amazing book, guys. This is actually the official sequel of to the uh, the Nightmare for Christmas, and uh, uh, so yeah, basically the story is you know Sally marries Jack and becomes the queen of Halloween Town. Well. Things don't go so well. She she doesn't like the title too well at all. To her, it's kind of hard to imagine being a queen and people want her to be this way and be that way and blah blah blah. So during during all this shit that's going on, she runs off into the woods where her and Zero find an ancient door, an ancient tree with an old fucking door in the shape of a moon. And they open it up and they smell of lavender and everything else. She was enticed to go in it at first, but then she changes her mind and she runs off. Accidentally leaving this door fucking open. And before she knows it, everybody in all the in all of the holiday towns. All the holiday towns. Yes. Christmas, St. Patrick's Day, Thanksgiving, Easter. Valentine's Day and Halloween and 4th of July all of them are put to sleep by some sinister monster which she later learns is known as the Sandman now it's not like the Sandman that you think of the Sandman that brings dreams this Sandman steals dreams and so she has to face her fears and go back into this town where this monster came from and she realizes this town is called Dream Town and she learns that these, the citizens of Dreamtown, they are the ambassadors of sleep. They actually help people go to sleep. And then when she tries to find answers to the mysteries of the Sandman, she comes across a couple of ragdolls. Yes, I said ragdolls, just like herself. <coughs> Man and woman, the governor and governess of Dreamtown. Uh, their names are Albert and Greta. Turns out Albert and Greta had a daughter that was stolen from them when she was roughly about 11, 12 years old by a people-eyed, uh, big-headed man in a lab coat. You're probably getting what I'm getting to. Yes, Sally is not 
was not created by Dr. Finkelstein. She was stolen. And Greta and Albert are her parents. And they actually tell her the truth about herself and the truth about Dreamtown. And they also fill in about the Sandman. That they had to build a wall because there's a wall around the entire city. And then there's a wall around the Dream Sand factory. The Dream Sand is what the Sandman uses to put people out to sleep. So, fucking anyway, they explain to her about the Sandman and what, they could, what could, has to be done to destroy the Sandman. And basically what they came up with is to destroy the grove of trees so that the Sandman could never come back into the, to the, into the realm ever again. Bad idea. Sally fights him on it. And of course, they destroy the grove of trees, but there's one other way to get into the other holiday realms through the real world. And so, Sally goes through what is known as the, the doors of the Lullaby Library, which is in Dreamtown. And she comes out in England in the Royal Library of Queen Elizabeth II, where she actually realizes learning there that it doesn't matter who you are, that um, it just you, you got to be true to yourself and true to your friends and your family. So, and she learns that, you know, that she can't be put to sleep with the dreams in because she is actually um, a resident of Dreamtown, so it doesn't affect it doesn't affect her. So she comes up with a way of putting the dream the, the sad man himself to sleep, but to do that though she had to go back to Halloween Town. So she goes to the real world and goes back to Halloween Town via you know the um, via the cemetery, where she picks an elaborate uh, concoction of different. Uh, um, you know, herbs and stuff to create a very toxic potion. And she dumps this potion into the well in the center of town where she lures the Sandman out and um, with a little bit of help from Zero was able to put the Sandman to sleep. And with the Sandman asleep, everyone that he put to sleep in all the Halloween, in all the fucking holiday towns and shit, including in the real world, all woke up. And then Sally then tells Jack and everyone else who was put to sleep by the fucking Sandman that she is actually from Dreamtown and was not created by Dr. Finkelstein. And of course when Jack learns this, he was absolutely fucking furious with Dr. Finkelstein because he doesn't like the bastard. So anyway, and then you, and then she tells Jack about the dream realm, you know, dream world. And, um, but there's no way to go back because they destroyed the Grove of Trees. Well... It turns out they held off long enough not to destroy the door into the real world because out through the uh, the doorway to the crypt into Halloween Town, we have um, Greta and Albert, her parents, coming to talk. And, uh, you know, absolutely fucking awesome shit. And, uh, of course, you know, everyone wants to get rid of the Sandman, but as soon as they get ready to do the nasty deed to kill the Sandman, the residents of Halloween Town, the Sandman stumbles and wakes up. But he's not the sinister monster as he was. He just looks like just a kind of a lazy, dreamy-eyed old man. And uh, he actually had his own sleep, had his own dreams. And he actually was really sorry, felt very, very fucking sorry about what he did, about stealing dreams and stuff and being alone in the woods in Dreamtown for so long he just and then he comes up to Sally and thanks her for putting him to sleep because he really enjoyed it and he said um, if you do me a favor and give me the recipe to the potion I would greatly appreciate it so I could have a nap from time fucking time to time and so she does and the residents of Dreamtown you know her parents you know uh, replant the grove of trees and soon the trees are back and um, it's absolutely awesome in the end. And Dr. Fickelstein gets his shit. He gets the shit handed to him, you know, fucking karma. Jack fucking sentences Dr. Fickelstein to 100 years community service in Dreamtown. <laughs> so I thought that was fucking funny. And of course, you know, at the very end of the book, you know, they were walking through, and of course, Zero discovers more trees beyond the uh, Dreamtown tree. And of all these old ancient realms and shit. And so, the, as the last line 
here in the book. I'll just read to you because it's actually right here. Because there is nothing quite so wasted as a life unlived, and I intend to live mine, fully unbound by the rules of others, queen or not. We all deserve these things, freedom, hope, a chance to find out who we really are. Jack squeezes my hand and smiles down at me. Well, my queen, where to? And of course it goes into the acknowledgments. So, you know, that's basically the story. Overall, I thought it was fucking amazing. I, this, they, they should have fucking turned this into a, a movie. You know what? They should. They should take this book and turn it into a fucking movie. It would be an amazing sequel to, you know, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Of course, and, you know, they could even use this title. I would even think maybe, yeah, this would be a good title for the movie. So, yeah, I mean, I, it's fucking amazing fucking amazing book. I thought it was a great story. You know, it, it you know had a lot of the same feeling as the original movie. And it has that same vibe and same tone to it. And it has that, you know, that classic Tim Burton feel to it. Even though Tim Burton didn't write this, but Tim Burton actually gave the green light Disney both for Miss Shay Earnshaw to write this. And it's official. This is an official fucking um, sequel to the movie, and I hope they fucking make a movie out of this. I really do. I give it, you know, two thumbs up, fucking five stars. It's absolutely just fucking amazing. Absolutely fucking amazing book. If you guys love Disney, you love Tim Burton, you love The Nightmare Before Christmas, you have got to read this book. Once again, it is Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, Long Live the Pumpkin Queen, by New York Times bestselling author Shay Earnshaw. So yeah. Go check it out, guys. Get it. Fucking check it out. I don't give a fuck. Just read it. So, yeah. There you have it, guys. That is my review of the book. And if you guys have any fucking questions or comments about anything, leave them in the fucking comment section down below, and I'll get back with you. And if you're new to my channel and you love the shit I do, I do all kinds of shit. I do movie reviews, book reviews, model reviews. I do model tutorials. I do model building. I do electric trains. I do antiques. I do, like I said, a little bit of everything. I'm the fucking jack of all trades with a foul mouth for fuck's sake. So, anyway, this is Commodore Santa Smooth Seas and Clear Skies. Happy sailing with all of you. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, hit that fucking subscribe button. Hit that damn notification bell. Never miss another video of mine ever again. And then, you know, that'd be fucking helping me out, so thank you. Until next time, this is Commodore Urban saying have smooth seas and clear skies. Happy sailing with all of you. God bless you all. Take care. Stay safe. Stay awesome. Be yourselves. And, um, let's go, Brandon. Fuck Joe Biden. And catch you on a warm trade wind where the hell he went hose. And I'll see you there. So long. Yay!